Hi class, welcome to today's group time. Today, we're going to be making inferences and predictions about a book before it's read to us, before we read it, all right? If you remember what an inference is, or if you don't remember what an inference is, I'll go ahead and remind you. We talked about this briefly before we left, all right? So making an inference involves gathering a clue from a story, relating it to information already presented in the story, and then making an inference based not only on knowledge of the story so far, but also a personal knowledge about our experiences in the world. All right? So you're going to have an opportunity to see what you can find out about a novel, inferences and predictions, before reading it. It is possible to make predictions about a book without reading every page, using as clues only the information provided by the title, the front and back covers, and the content of three pages from the beginning, middle, and end of the book. Now, this can be a useful skill when you're carrying out research, identifying uh, quick resources that relate to the topic being researched, and then getting rid of resources that don't relate. So this is a way for you to determine whether or not you want to spend time reading a book, all right? So I've got a novel here. I've got uh, some of you may be familiar with it. It's, I know it doesn't show up there, Robinson Crusoe, all right? So this is a novel that I am going to read a little bit from uh, to decide if it's something that I, um, well, I will read it for, for these reasons. I want to find out about the novel before I actually read it, okay? So this is, um, in order to figure out if we want to read this or not, we're going to be using the six W's, all right? The six W's are who, what, where, when, why, and how, all right? So um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to examine the front and back covers very closely. I'm going to look at any illustrations. And then I'm going to read a page from the uh, beginning, a page from the middle, and a page from the end. And from that, I hope to answer these six questions. Ready? Who will be the main character of the story? When will the story take place? Where will the story take place? What do I think will happen to the main character? And why do I think this will happen to the main character? And finally, how will the story end? The six W there is actually doesn't start with a W, it's how, but it has a W in it. So let's see if these three pages will give us that information and the and the other information on the front and back, okay? Title, Robinson Crusoe. It has got a picture of a, an island and water around it and some trees, okay? It is by Daniel Defoe, all right? So I'm gonna read the back here. Widely acknowledged as the first English novel, Daniel Defoe's adventure story of a shipwrecked sailor became an instant classic upon its publication in 1719 and the yardstick for countless castaway narratives to follow. Robinson Crusoe, an English sailor, finds himself marooned on a desert island after the rest of his shipmates drown in a terrible wreck. He survives on the island for nearly three decades, domesticating livestock, cultivating plants, and constructing a modest house for himself. But his solitary existence is threatened when he discovers, in one of the most memorable moments in literature, another footprint in the sand. Robinson Crusoe is more than a great yarn. It is an allegory rife with moral and religious symbolism and significance, seen through the eyes of an ordinary man struggling to survive in extraordinary circumstances. Samuel Johnson wrote, was there ever yet anything written by mere man that was wished longer by its readers? Okay, so I've, re I've read the first page or sorry, the front cover and the back cover. That gives us a lot right there. But let's take a look at a few of the pages. Now, I have already read some of these pages, so I know what's in them. Um, that took a little bit of time, but you want to find something that's going to give you some information. All right, so you, you might have to dance around a couple pages to find one. So 
whenever you're doing this on your own, you want to find a page from the beginning, a page from the middle, and a page from the end, and read those pages. And you should have an idea of what this book's about and if it would help you in what you're trying to do. So here's the first page from somewhere in the beginning. It's on page 42 in my book. I was now landed and safe on shore and began to look up and thank God that my life was saved in a case wherein there was some minutes before scarce any room to hope. I believe it is impossible to express to the life that was the ecstasies and transports of the soul are when it was so saved, as I may say, out of the very grave. And I do not wonder now at that custom that when a malefactor who has the heel halter about his neck is tied up and, thus, and just going to be turned off and has a reprieve brought to him, I say, do not wonder that they bring a surgeon with it to let him blood that very moment they tell him of it that the surprise may not drive the animal spirits from the heart and overwhelm him, for sudden joys like griefs confound at first. I walked about on the shore, lifting my hands and my whole being, as I may say, wrapped up in the contemplation of my deliverance, making a thousand gestures and motions which I cannot describe, reflecting upon all the comrades that were drowned, drowned and that there should not be one soul saved but myself. For, as for them, I never saw them afterwards, or any sign of them except three of their hats, one cap, and two shoes that were not fellows. I cast my eyes to the stranded vessel, when the breach and froth of the sea being so big, I could hardly see it. It lay so far off and considered, Lord, how was it possible I could get on shore? Okay, so that was our first page that we read. Let's pick somewhere from the middle, shall we? In my book, it is page 188. This is about mid-story. Let's find out what's going on in the middle of the story. But that which astonished him most was to know how I had killed the other Indians so far off. So pointing to him, he made signs to me to let, to let him go to him. So I bade him go, as well as I could. When he came to him, he stood like one amazed, looking at him, turned him first on one side, then on the other, looked at the wound the bullet had made, which it seems was just in his breast, where it had made a hole, and no great quantity of blood had followed, but he had bled inwardly, for he was quite dead. He took up his bow and arrows and came back, so I turned to go away and beckoned to him to follow me, making signs to him that more might come after them. Upon this, he signed to me that he should bury them with sand, that they might not be seen by the rest if they followed. And so I made signs again to him to do so. He fell to work, and in an instant he had scraped a hole in the sand with his hands big enough to bury the first in, and then dragged him into it and covered him and did so also by the other. I believe he had buried them both in the quarter of an hour. Then calling him away, I carried him, not only to my castle, but also, but quite away to my cave on the farther part of the island. So I did not let my dream come to pass in that part, that he came into my grove for shelter. Here I gave him bread and a bunch of raisins to eat and a draught of water, which I found he was indeed in great distress for. By his running and having refreshed him, I made signs for him to go lie down and sleep, pointing to a place where I had laid a great parcel of rice straw and a blanket upon it, which I used to sleep upon myself sometimes. So the poor creature laid upon and went to sleep. Okay, now let's take a look at one from the end of the book. 234. This is not the very end, but it's getting close to the end. Page 234 in my book. The poor man with tears running down his face and trembling, looking like one astonished, astonished, returned. Am I talking to God or man? Is it a real man or an angel? Be in no fear about that, sir, said I. If God had sent an angel to relieve you, he would have come better clothed and armed. Uh, after another manner than you see me in. 
Pray, lay aside your fears. I am a man, an Englishman, and disposed to assist you. You see, I have one servant only. We have arms and ammunition. Tell us freely, can we serve you? What is your case? Our case, said he, sir, is not too long to tell, is too long to tell you while our murderers are so near. But in short, sir, I was a commander of that ship. My men have mutinied against me, and they have hardly prevailed on not to murder me, and at last have set me on shore in this desolate place, with these two men with me, one my mate, and other a passenger, where we expected to perish, believing the place to be uninhabited, and know not yet what to think of it. Where are those brutes, your enemies? said I. Do you know where they are gone? There they lie, sir, said he, pointing to a thicket of trees. My heart trembles for fear they have seen us and heard you speak. If they have, they will certainly murder us all. Have they any firearms? said I. He answered that they only had two pieces and one which they left in the boat. Well then, said I, leave the rest to me. I see they're all asleep. It is an easy thing to kill them all, but shall we rather take them prisoners? He told me there were, two, there were two desperate villains among them that it was scarce safe to show any mercy to, but if they were secured, he believed all the rest would return to their duty. I asked him which, which they were. I asked him which they were. He told me he could not at that distance describe them, but he would obey my orders in anything I would direct. Well, says I, let us retreat out of their view or hearing, lest they awake, and then we'll resolve, resolve further. So they willingly went back with me till the woods covered, them, covered us from them. Look you, sir, said I, if I venture upon your deliverance, are you willing to make two conditions with me? He anticipated my proposals by telling me that both he and the ship, if recovered, should be wholly directed and commanded by me in everything. And if the ship was not recovered, he would live and die with me in what part of the world soever I would send him. And the other two men said the same. Well, says I, my conditions are but two, that while you stay here on this island with me, you will, you will not pretend to any other authority here. And if I put arms into your hands, you will upon all occasions give them up to me and do no prejudice to me or mine upon this island. And in the meantime, be governed by my orders. Number two, that if the ship is or may be recovered, you will carry me and my man to England passage free. Okay, so we've had some good passages there that kind of give us an idea of what's going on. So let's, let's try and see if we can answer these questions, okay? I've got the questions here in front of me, and I will tell you what I think just based on what I read. Who will be the main character of the story? It's in the title, Robinson Crusoe. All right, that one's pretty easy. Second question, when will the story take place? Nowhere in the story that we read told us when it took place. However, however, on the back, <clears throat> it did tell us that this was written, this was published in 1719, okay? Um, and it seems like ships were a big deal in this book. So we can probably assume it's around then. I, I don't really know. From what I read, there's really no way to answer that question. But it was written in 1719. Okay, uh, where will the story take place? All right, we don't know where exactly, uh, but we do know that he's an Englishman, and he is not in England. Um, he is off, he is on some island that is not in England. So um, he wants to get uh, back to England, so he's not there now. Probably don't have a whole lot of information on what I read about where the story takes place. Next question, what do I think will happen to the main character? Well, based on what I've read, I think the main character arrives at this place, being the only person that he knows on the island. Through certain interactions, he finds people that he can trust that are going to survive with him. Um, we had already discovered the first one that he met, um, and then we, we discovered a second person that he met and actually, actually the second person and then two others with that person that we think he can trust. Okay. So 
basically what I think is going to happen to him is that he is going to form alliances and somehow he is going to get off that island from these alliances he's formed. I also think that he's going to get in fights because as we can tell, there were already enemies that they were staring at and they had to take, they had to take care of. And there was already a bullet wound in somebody in one of the first things I've read. So there will, there are gunshots, there are fights and, and gunfights and things like that. All right, why do I think this will happen to the main character? Well, I think that happens to the main character because the two places I've picked out already, they already have some sort of <clears throat> contention between people. There's contention, there's gunfights, and there are alliances being made. So in those two parts, there already is. I can assume that there are much more, uh, there are much more clues in this, there are much more things in this story happening with him finding people and having to kill people to survive. So he's not only surviving against the elements, he's surviving against people that are on this island as well. Uh, last one, how will the story end? In my thoughts, I think he'll make it back to England. So remember he was talking to that, uh, the new person that he met, and he said that there's a ship over there, and if the ship is still able to be used, then um, then you can use it. And so Robinson Crusoe says, one of my, uh, one of my conditions is, is that you stay with me. And the other condition is that if that ship's available, you provide us a passage out of here into England, which is his homeland because it said he's an Englishman. So I think the story will end by him finally getting off that island and getting back home to England. I've never read this book before, so I don't know, but that is how with just spending a few minutes here and there, I can make a prediction and inferences about what can happen in this book just by reading a few pages and the front and back and looking at the picture and the title, okay? So, uh, like I said before, sometimes you'll look at a page and like, this makes no sense. So you have to kind of scan a few pages and find one that's gonna have some good meat in it, all right? So next time, whenever you're wanting to do um, Whenever you're wanting to do a research or wanting to figure out what book you may want to read, this is a great way to do it without spoiling it for you. It just gives you an idea. It's almost like watching a preview before you watch a movie. So there's that. Uh, this page that I used for these um, questions, the what, sorry, the who, when, where, what, why, and how, I'm going to send a copy of this through Hi Mama to your parents. Um, and I would like for you to find a book that you have not read. Um, it can be a fiction story, a nonfiction story, anything like that. And just, just practice this and go through and see if you can answer all these. As you can tell, I could not get to every single question, but see if you can. That's a great challenge and it's also great practice because when we get back to school, we'll be using strategies like this to decide what we're going to do for research and for reading, okay? Um, that's it for me today. Um, be looking out for that through Hi Mama, and that would be great if you could go ahead and start practicing that while you're at home. All right, till next time. Bye.